Hey. You ever notice how it seems like, uh, we live in a world that we're surrounded by so much stuff that so many people and positions that claim to be there to help us. There's organizations all over the place, there's businesses, there's government bureaucracies everywhere that claim that their goal is to help people. You got a help group for everyone. Alcoholics Anonymous, the 98% rate of failure, helping the alcoholic. Same thing with narcan on alcohol, you know, drugs anonymous, all that shit. Same thing. You got freaking uh, governments and DMVs and stuff claiming to help to try to protect the drivers and keep them safe and just robbing you blind with a big smile on their face. You got, you know, charity groups and churches claim to help people. The help is so little. It's like that picture I got coming up here with a, I've seen this meme, different versions of it. Well, there's like a you know, person over a, hovering over a hole with a rope or a ladder next to them, and they got their hand out, stretched, you know, just pretending to help. A pittance of help. Like if you see, and people seem to be so pleased with themselves. With, with sort of the pittance of help that there is everywhere. They're so pleased with the amount of people trying to help. And I know there's real people that genuinely go out of their way to try to help. I'm not talking about them. I'm talking about the majority of what they call help. Well, for instance, you know, I don't know about Goodwill, but like take Goodwill, for instance, I, I don't know that much about it, but I know, or Teen Challenge or something like that, right? You got these groups where they'll help you or whatever. If you go work basically as a slave for free for them for like a year or longer you'll see guys working in there that they worked for like a year or longer without any pay <laughs> and they'll go over to some foreign countries to help out some village in Africa or something when there's literally thousands and thousands of homeless people sleeping in tents and cars outside in the street right across the road from them, you know? Or, uh, all these other charity organizations where they'll take, uh, they'll take your money and then they take, uh, and they'll give, you know, 10 or 20% if, if you're gen on, on a the more generous ones will give 10 or 20 percent of the money to the actual cause they claim to be raising money for and spend the other 80 percent uh, 80 90 percent on to to hire staff and to give themselves fat wallets and buy cars and stuff and you go in these churches and stuff and they're gonna help you save your eternal soul right and go in there and the pastor's got a rolex on driving a fucking Bentley or something or a Porsche goes home to his big two or three story house and land and everything I need to the Lord told me I need you to donate another 500 million dollars cause God wants me to have a bigger jet <laughs> you hear that one no, that's a real story. Guy okay, really did that. 
just it's fucking crazy. Send us your money. Send us your money. And you're just forced into these situations. All these people want to help. I'm going to help. Well, how do they help you? They browbeat you and lecture you. Beat you over the head with bullshit. And if you're lucky, maybe they'll give you a sandwich. Or they'll... You know... Even the, like the even the the charity organizations that do help, but the help is so is such a small amount of help, you know, that it's almost just a waste of fucking that with all the red tape and all the bureaucracy that you have to go through to even get that small amount of help, it's almost just a waste of your fucking time to even go there, you know. Well, if you want to get a some housing voucher or something, somebody might, they might help you uh, pay a small amount of first month's rent, but they can't get you approved to rent the fucking place. And you can't be approved to rent the place unless you're making about 60 grand a year for the cheapest places. 54,000. No. Yeah. And it's just, we're helping, you know. Just, it's everywhere, man. And you notice how people that get into positions, like any kind of position of authority, and it, this happens all the time, like almost everywhere now. You notice how, like, there's not just this, like, tyranny in, in governments of the world and things like that, but there's, like, a little micro dictatorships or something everywhere. You go to the DMV, you go to a, some store somewhere, or the manager there, you know, the, it, it, just about anything you have to deal with throughout your day, you run into these little micro dictators, you know, like these people on a power trip that they're going to tell you what's what and what you got to do and do this and do that. And, and they're going to, or they're going to like exercise their power by ignoring you for a couple of minutes while you stand there waiting for them to respond, you know, shit like that. It's all over the place, man. Just all these power tripping control freaks like everywhere. It's in the fuck. I mean, it's just a society that the society they built around us now is it's become just this massive, like, tyranny of, like, dictators and, and bullies everywhere about everything, man. They gotta force their, their beliefs, force their ideas on you. The point of a gun, you know. And they just... Threats and, and bludgeoning with... Bullshit, just endlessly, man. You know? They have to, like, force us all to conform to whatever their ideology is. You're not allowed to have a disagreement or a difference of opinion. You're not allowed to think for yourself. You have to just do what you're told. And it's, it's everywhere. It's everywhere. It's in fucking... It's our entire basis of our society. It's everywhere. It's in everything. Social operant conditioning, man. You know? You know what to think, what to wear, what to, f how to feel about this or that, you know? What to buy, you know? It's everywhere, man. It's just forced down our fucking throat. Do this, do that. You go to school, you gotta walk in a straight line on a certain path. You gotta clock in when you get there. You get a gold star for being the most obedient. You get punished for disobedience you gotta learn from a very young age to be obedient to anyone in a perceived position of authority because they've been put over top of you and then you grow up you get older and you never really can grow up because you're just put in a position where you're like 
have to live like a child forever because there's always some big daddy above you that you have to obey and submit and surrender to. It's just, what the hell, man? How has humanity become so enslaved? Actually, I know quite a lot of the answers to that, actually, but... <laughs> I think it's just got to the point where we've, as a people, especially in the West, but many places all over the world, it's been so long that we've been living in a state of, of slavery, basically, that people don't even recognize it for what it is. It's like we're in a prison where the other inmates are the guards. Like being a frog in a pot, you try to jump out of the pot and all the other frogs grab you by the ankles and pull you back in. And they jump on your back and they pull you down into the boiling water. And you say, get out of there guys, we're boiled alive. Everyone grabs you and pulls you down and says, no, the water's fine. <sighs> or like you're watching your your whole family or something just burn alive in a house on house fire or something and you're running and you say get out get out the house is on fire get out get out and they just tell you to shut to shut up call you crazy call you conspiracy theorists whatever and then not only will they not listen to you but they grab hold of you and they grab you by the arms and they block the door and they want to keep you from being able to get out so that you'll burn alive with them that's what it feels like living in this world the way it is now. It's just crazy. You see it. When you see how fucking messed up everything is, it's like, it's just insane, man. And there doesn't seem to be anything I can do about it, you know? I can try to speak and maybe one or two people, the heart and the soul here comprehend I don't know it's just but anywhere you go man I can't, I, I'm not really free to hardly speak anywhere because things I had to say are not very popular I guess or just not something people want to hear if you don't know what operant conditioning or social operant conditioning Pavlovian conditioning if you don't know what that is I can give you some examples um, when you see a stop sign what do you do you stop right or a red light stop you stop because you've been conditioned all your life and what if there's nobody around there's no other traffic on the road how long do you sit there behind the red light because it's red and that's what you've been taught to do right or uh It's just an example. It's it's like that everywhere. You're taught to we're taught to line up. There's another example. We're taught to line up and to walk through ropes or chains and places so that we you know, just stand in in a line and 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 like they'll 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 do things like they'll take they'll have uh you know the ropes that they put up and some you know various businesses they can make you walk through the ropes and they'll have these ropes set up sometimes in like a crisscross pattern so it's like you're walking to the left and then you have to turn right and walk that way and then you have to go around and turn left again and then you have to walk right again and back and forth back and forth and even if there's nobody there you have to I want you to walk through this fucking obstacle course or whatever because it's conditioning. Or like when you're a kid in school. 
and they have you punch a time clock when you get there and time clock when you get out you know and this conditioning you it's all conditioning they condition us to be employees they condition us to be factory workers or whatever to get up every morning yeah they make you get up early because if you don't get good sleep you can't think as clearly as you would otherwise you're more tired you're more susceptible to brainwashing and social condition operant conditioning they can kind of What do you think it would look like if if say somebody if you took a bunch of kids or something right to an island somewhere and didn't teach them when, like really young kids that hadn't known much about the world toddlers or younger you know and you took them to an island somewhere. And all you taught them was, you know, basic survival skills. How to hunt, how to fish, how to grow food, how to make shelters, things like that. How do you think they would turn out? And if you left them there just those left those kids there forever what would their children know if you sh came back there 500 years later and there's lived and developed societies what do you think you would find 500 years a thousand years later I would bet that you would find basically tribe of villagers or something right <laughs> maybe so where does this concept of authoritarian control come from it's uh it's not natural not really in a way you know at least not the way that we're in it not the way it is now um in some ways, you could say it's 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 in our nature to to have uh, you know hierarchies, like even in the animal kingdom or something. There will be a when you're talking about lions or something. There will be some alpha lion that head of the roost or whatever. You know, same with all sorts of different animals always have some dominant leader or whatever kind of but that's just like physical dominance or whatever right in the human world it's it's more of a psychological sort of a thing they dominate through grift through deception Dominating forces in this world are psychiatrists, psychologists, scientists that do all kinds of research on ways to control human behavior and things like that, you know? It's scary. It's damn scary. I feel like in a lot of ways we would be better off. Like maybe the smart ones were the Amish. You know? Because the Amish don't rely on the outside world and the technology and the, so much on the... They do have to deal with money but it's different, you know? And they don't really have to deal with money that much. 
what they do if they want to make money is they just they build they build furniture or they build uh, fancy fireplaces or they grow a lot of crops and then they sell them at the Saturday market or something you know they don't go out and flip burgers at fucking McDonald's or pump gas at the gas station because it's like part of the beast system you know and they're right it is it fucking is these corporations are all in bed together all these big companies are basically I mean most of the companies in the world are owned nowadays and, and businesses and like everything you could imagine are owned by just a few people I don't have the exact numbers in front of me now but like like for instance all the news media all the magazines and and news stations and movie companies you know TV stations everything like owned by like like four or five different people or something basically own everything and then you've got like just a few corporations that own almost all the land and all the businesses in the western world basically if you want to start figuring that figuring out about that like just look into any business or brand name you can think of see who owns it and then see who owns them and eventually you'll find some big massive corporation that owns like thousands like if you go to a grocery store or something right there's only like three or four companies I think that own every single grocery store and all these different brands you know there's monopolies everywhere everywhere there's monopolies oil monopolies and food monopolies on media monopolies on just everything man definitely a banking monopoly <laughs> More and more money and power are being aggregated into the hands of fewer and fewer people. And it's just going on and on and just getting worse and worse. And most people don't even know this. They don't even notice. And if they did notice, they wouldn't even care. But for all the wealth that's being transferred into fewer and fewer hands, it's more and more wealth being transferred out of their pocket. What was it that, uh, I think it was Thomas Jefferson or something said that you're the banking institutions are more deadly to us than military occupation or standing armies. Yeah. We allow private banks to seize control of our currency. First by inflation, then by deflation. Our children will wake up homeless on the continents their fathers conquered. Yeah. Well, I'd say that seems to be the case now. And it's damn sad. And to think that, you know, it hurts so much to see and to realize solutions to so many of the issues in the world, but to not be able to really do anything about it, because it takes a bunch of other people. Damn bugs are everywhere. Sorry. 
Went to go squish a bug there. <laughs> There's a pretty big one on the wall. Anyhow, yeah. I forgot I even left a recording. But yeah, there's uh, there's monopolies on everything, and that's why. And then there's other problems going on right now that people don't even realize hardly. Like, most people don't even realize, or they don't really take take it seriously and realize what a huge threat these things are to our health and to our our livelihood and to our lives. All like like AI, you know. We've got AI basically running the stock market right now. There's AI, and then not only have they been developing AI, they're developing all these robots and stuff too. So what do you get when you add robots to AI? <laughs> doo 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 doo. Silicona, you know. Skynet was activated. That's like, that's where we're at, man. That's where we're at, basically. We got shit straight up like at a fucking iRobot or Terminator or some shit going on. Built all, all across the world. And there's self-driving, you know, there's automation. You got autonomous drones, you got self-driving cars, you know, on and on. And technology, which gets more and more advanced. And so we're looking at a scenario here where in the next, it could happen pretty rapidly almost overnight. I mean, these machines and things have been being developed and, and mass-produced for a long, long time. Kind of not super out in the open, but somewhat out in the open. There could be armies of these fucking things already, man. They could have machines to replace literally every human fucking function. There's machines that are performing damn open heart surgeries and shit on people you know the technology already exists to replace every pretty much damn near every farm worker every buddy working at a grocery store replace the janitors replace the stalkers replace the you know everything you could replace all the truck drivers, all the cabbies, all the airline pilots, everything. Then how are you going to feel about your gerb? My job took our job. It took our job. No, these fucking machines will take your gerb. So people can't, like, get over this fucking concept of... of selling their lives away for pieces of paper then we're fucking screwed basically we need to try to find a way and to remember how free human free humanity would live you know try to find a way out try to find a way to break these chains off of us and and find a path back to freedom to a freedom that used to exist maybe a long, long time ago. A freedom that we've forgotten about, that our grandparents had forgotten about. You know? The freedom that is the dream. I mean, none of the wars or, or, you know, massive, none of the sort of massive scale wars and things would have ever been possible if not for the, 
concept of authority, the belief in the concept of authority. It's not for the obedience of those people. Like, you know how, you know how war could end. Everybody just put down their damn rifles and walk the fuck away. End of war. Basically, yeah. But, it just, I mean, look at this shit. You got people everywhere in the world just building fucking, building TVs and building microwaves. And like, I got a hundred million microwaves per human being alive on the planet or something. Building all kinds of useless shit, just doing all this busy work every day, every day, fucking eight hours a day, ten hours a day, twelve hours a day, busting ass, doing some fucking shit job for little green pieces of paper with paintings on them. When we literally got hundreds of millions of people, possibly even more in the world that are in extreme poverty, that are homeless, starving, living under fucking bridges and shit. We got people over in other parts of the world that don't even have clean water to drink or fucking food. People living in deserts that could be fucking forests and farmlands. Waters that are filthy that could be cleaned. You know? The problems of the world, the real problems of the world, what do people need to survive? You need food, water, and shelter. That's about it, man. You need to be able to have something to drink, something to eat, and shelter. But we gotta sell our lives away for fucking pieces of paper to follow the orders and dictates of somebody above us that tells us what to do. We freeze, we starve, we're spit on and stepped over like pieces of trash. God damn it. This world could be so fucking beautiful, man. What was that quote from that movie? He said he... He said he saw... In New York as the new model for the new concentration camp. Where the inmates are the guards. And they built their own prison. So having developed schizophrenia, they... Are unable to see it as a prison. Or, you know... <laughs> yeah. That's what we got, man. We got like, we've literally forged our own chains. Our, our, our ancestors and, and on and on. We have forged our own chains. And those that hold the whip at our back are our own neighbors, our own family members, our own friends. And if you try to escape, they'll hunt you down. They'll chase you down, tackle, tackle, bleh, tackle you to the ground, and put the chains back on you. Beat you for daring to disobey. Is it possible that humanity could? find out, could, could find a way to something actually resembling freedom in our lifetime? Could we turn shit around before our children or children's children or... I mean, can you even fucking imagine as crazy as things are now, could you even imagine 
like what the life of your children will be like in fucking 20 years, 30 years, 40 years, if we can't turn this shit drastically around like right fucking now. If God doesn't come riding down from heaven in a fucking chariot in the sky and save the fucking day, like how doomed we fucking are and how absolutely horrific the lives of children and grandchildren and things like that will be. Like, I mean, it's going to make fucking Brave New World in 1984 look like a fucking Mr. Rogers or something. If these people get their way, this is like, it's going to be like, I mean, it's already getting, it's already getting so crazy. It's almost like the, like the end of the, what was that Adam Sandler movie, Little Nicky, where the fucking demon brothers take over the world and they raise hell to the earth or something like that's that's what it feels like man it's like Papa's chicken is fucking awesome <laughs> oh, it's, your heart. it's a funny movie but God where's Ozzy Osbourne when you need him huh Because there's fucking people running this place are fucking batshit. I mean, this place has got so crazy and messed up. I just wish something could be done. I mean, when does it end? When does the madness ever end? When are we going to be able to... I, I Honestly, a lot of times when I look at the way this world is and how screwed up things are and the amount of bullshit that you have to deal with, I almost wish that that I'd just never been born. I mean, I had some good memories from childhood or something. I must wish that I hadn't been born or that I just... I don't know. I could have died when I was still young and innocent or something. Before I had to see how fucking horrible the world had become. Before I had to have my heart broken by... And stabbed in the back by everyone that I looked up to, everyone that I trusted and adored, everyone I loved, basically, just about. It's just, it's such a mind fucking, such a heartbreaking thing to wake up and realize that all these people you thought were heroes are a bunch of vicious murderers. To see that, or, or or mean, nasty people, that just paint fake, painted on smiles or whatever, you know. And to have to see how the world just keeps on spinning and things just keep getting worse and worse, and people just keep drifting further and further to sleep, coping with it, unable to look at the truth and see for what it is. They got us all pitted against each other. Pointing the fingers back and forth, but it's this really small group of people in the upper echelons of society that are fucking everything up. 
Then, of course, they have a lot of lower level people running around, little Weasley fucks everywhere. Work for them. But, I mean, ultimately, we were living in, just like the guy in the movie said, his movie was called uh, My Dinner with Andre. It's like we're living in a fucking pr in a big open air prison, and there don't have to be any walls or any physical chains on our ankles because we're chained by we're chained by threats and we're chained by peer pressure and we're chained by pieces of paper paper bars and paper chains is the title of a poem that I wrote years and years ago. I don't know if I still have it somewhere, but maybe. It's just, it's fucked up, man. Seriously fucked up. Yeah. Alright, I guess that's the end of this rant.